Hello, Timber Surf here with Draw and Print number 6. And in this video, I'm going to talk about supports. But as you can see, there's no reason why you can't print a flat design straight onto the bed plate. And it works as long as the design has a flat at the bottom. But obviously, there are three dimensional objects and other reasons that you'd want to put supports underneath. And I basically struggled to realize how to do it. So first off, I used the auto support. And from a little bit of learning on various forums and so forth, I realized that you can't just put it in square. You actually have to put it in at a slight angle. And I wasn't quite sure whether it should be both X and the Y axis that you need to put an angle or just the one. So I made an example test print of some O gauge windows and put both in. And to be honest, using the auto support, the results were reasonably okay. But the problems start when you put more than one object in to do with a print. Obviously, you want to be efficient, and putting lots of items in at a time means that you can produce more in one go. And it's this is where I had problems. Things started to fail. And I didn't understand why. So after a bit of research and some discussions with other 3D printing people, I think I now know what the issue is. And the main issue is that I simply used auto supports. And even when I put them in with manual supports, I probably put them in in the wrong places and I used the wrong size. I basically used the lightweight version where there's a lightweight, medium and a heavy. And essentially what you need is a big anchorage point at the bottom with some heavy supports. And then you can start lightening off the supports as you go up. And the reason is that when the print tries to release itself from the bottom, there are a lot of forces in play. Basically, you've got a piece of hard plastic that's now joined onto the base plate or the model that is also tied onto the bottom of the tank, which is a clear plastic film in it, and it's stuck to it. And when you lift the Z-axis base plate up, what happens is that you're trying to release the product from both the plastic sheet of the tank and the base plate, or the rest of the model, and something has to give. Well, the FEP film at the bottom of the tank is designed to flex, and therefore it bends and it springs off and you can then come back down just short of where the design needs to be for the layer thickness and you can make another layer and so it goes on. Well that might sound a bit gobbledygooky so let's break that down and what I've done is I've done a little diagram and what I'm showing you here is a cross-sectional view of the printer. The arrow is pointing to the build plate. The sides of the tank and the base which is the little purple thing a piece of FEP the green stuff is the resin and the grey part is the base of the printer purple is the UV light source and the blue dark blue represents the LCD screen so when the build plate comes down and stops short of the FEP by the thickness of the first layer, the LCD switches on the right area where we want to expose the UV rays to the resin. And this then hardens that little bit of resin that's exposed that we can now try to separate. But as you can see from the video, it basically pulls the FEP up with it until the FEP bends and releases and then the z-axis comes back down again a little bit short by the printing thickness and the uv rays make it hard again and so on and so on and the process repeats itself so as you can imagine the bigger the model you're trying to print the larger the surface area has to be released from the fep so you put more stress on the supports which can buckle or break away and some of the attempts that I had were quite obviously 
just left a set of supports and the model just vanished basically because it was peeled away from the supports and left on the FEP and the rest of the model just didn't print because there was nothing to print up to because that first layer was still on the FEP and I subsequently had to scrape that little thin layer off the FEP and restart the whole process again and had a lot of failures doing that. You learn your lesson. So the next time I run a big print or a lot of items on the build plate, I think I now know that I need to put in some heavier supports to take care of that bigger load. One for the future. There is another problem that I still haven't quite resolved where things have gone a bit wobbly and I'm still not overly sure why because it hasn't removed it from the supports and I put enough supports in mm, I don't know I'm going to have to do some more experimentation perhaps modify angles and things and discover why these have failed but we'll come back to that in another episode <laughs>